Ooh. Ooh, yeah. Good video today. Good, good video today. So you, you've probably seen the previous video, which is where we brought the R9 Fury X uh, back to life. Like you can see behind this shoulder here, um, putting that 8057 Morpheus cooler on there um, to, to resurrect it from the dead liquid cooler, which is also behind me over my shoulder there. So yeah, we had a nice success with that. We got some nice performance out of it and we're thinking, yes, this is like the RX 570 kind of performance. So today we're gonna to be seeing what else we got with that trade in build. Cause obviously this customer, they came in, bought a new PC from us, but we offer a little trade in service just for a quick sale. Um, so we can see what kind of goodies we got in this old beast. But before we get into that, of course, as always, we've got to talk about our sponsor. So let's do that. This video is brought to you in partnership with jcpccustoms.com, purveyors of fine gaming PCs. But why buy from JCPC Customs? There are three pillars to what we do. Enthusiast grade build quality, stunning good looks that you are proud to display and all at a fair price. But how do you get your hands on one? Well, we've got three methods. We have the ready to go PC section. These are PCs that are already built, ready to ship out with optimized specifications. So excellent for the most fuss free experience. For those that want to spec out themselves, you can use our configurator listing. And this is where you can choose some lists of parts that we have available to us. But for the most granular experience, the truly custom experience, you can use our custom spec service. And this is where you fill out our Google form. You can choose every component, even down to the model number and any other acoustic that you also want with the PC can be accommodated here. So thank you very much for watching and head to jcpccustoms.com to learn more. All righty, 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 we're back and this is the proper video time now, baby. So let's see what we found inside this machine. So I saw the case and I thought, oh, what have I done here? Uh, I have no idea what's going to be in here and the case looks like kind of kind of crap to be honest so like I was expecting something really quite poor inside there um, but actually I was pleasantly surprised so let's go through what we were able to find uh, in the case um, so this actually probably back in the day was a bit of a beast so we had um, uh, Intel i7 I think 5830 or something like that it's one of the HEDT ones six core 12 thread processor fifth gen pretty good I'm happy with that that'll go nicely in a nice budget system so I was happy with that they had an Asus X99S board and these are apparently quite sought after it's one of those sort of workstationy boards again so it's got loads of PCIe lanes um, it's got quad channel memory you know the whole shebang and looks like it's actually pretty well put together um, considering its age we also had 32 gigabytes of um, DDR4 um, which actually is perfect as we will see later on loads of storage in here so so much storage we had i think we had one two three four hard drives um i think three of them were one terabyte and one of them was 1.5 terabyte i macro rit scanned all of them they were all beautiful absolutely beautiful there was also three ssds in there they're all samsung 850s and they were like i think 250 gig each which is going to be nice we've got a boot drive we've got a hard drive this is all looking really nice we've got and we can spread this over multiple systems so i'm already pretty excited about all of this there's also a blu-ray and a dvd rw drive in there um, i'll just pull up pull those out and sell them separately for a few quid just to get rid of them um the case is i'm just going to give that away and then the PS de resistance, as they say in France, was two. Not just one, there was two R9 Fury Xs. So the one you see here is actually just one of them. Um, we, we actually managed to get two um, graphics cards out of this. But both of them sounded pretty horrible when I turned the computer on. So I turned it on and all I heard was... Coming from the, coming from the GPU. So obviously... Um, Something's happened to it, so perhaps the um, perhaps the pump's dead inside it. Um, maybe it's been running dry. Maybe all the liquids permeated out, but definitely not fit for purpose anymore. So that's why we did what we did in the last video and put the the Morpheus cooler on. Um, so that was a really nice find because, as we were saying earlier, it's about an RX 570 style performance. So I'm pretty excited. There was also a Corsair HX 1000 power supply in there. 
I'll find a use for that at some point, but we won't be using it for the build today. So we've pulled all that out, we've seen all the goodies that we can get, and I thought we could get two really nice budget PCs out of this. Because if you watch the end of the previous video, you'll you'll see that I was talking about how hard it is to put together budget systems now. Um, you know, I was saying things like, you know, the GTX 1650 systems, they're going for like 700, 750 quid, which in a normal market it's just it's not worth spending that much for that kind of like caliber of system, is it? So getting this kind of thing is really good. I can offer some really great value for money um, with this. So let's get into the parts that we're going to be using um, to make a couple of machines out of these graphics cards. It's going to be a mix of the ones we found and some new ones as well. So our plan of attack is doing two identical PCs. The only difference between them is going to be that one will be in a black case, one will be in a white case. So you've got a bit of a choice there. So the spec is going to be an i3 10100F. So it's the four core, eight thread processor. It's 10th gen, which means yes, it's gonna work on Windows 11 as well. Not that I particularly care about that, um, but great performance. It's a really good sort of budget CPU. Very, very good for the money. We're using the Intel stock cooler with this because um, that's plenty for uh, an i3. So there's no worries there whatsoever. Motherboard, we've got the MSI B460M Pro VDH Wi-Fi. So absolutely plenty for this CPU. I mean, these can even run those um, uh, locked i7s no problem as well got your wi-fi built in too which is a nice little bonus and overall it's a decent board um, msi is quite nice for their fan control as well which is going to help us out moving on to the memory we're going to be using that HyperX memory that we found um, in our trade-in pc so there was 30 gigabytes but that was in four lots of eight so we're just going to split that two lots of eight making 16 gigs and it runs at 2666 megahertz which is the maximum that b460 can support so this is working out beautifully um, and now our SSD hard drive combo. So we've got SSD, Samsung 850 Pro, um, which is I think 250 gig and it's DRAM buffered, I think. I can't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be a nice little boot SSD. And then we've got our one terabyte Seagate hard drive in reserve for all your games and stuff. So come on, we're really getting going here. Um, next up is the storage. No, it's not, we've already done the storage. Uh -huh. Next up is the case. Um, the case is the Game Max Diamond. The reason I chose this is because I've had my eye on this case and I don't think it's very good for high performance machines, but for something and more entry to low mid level, it actually could be quite good because it's got a slight mesh on the front, but only partial. Um, so, and the other good thing about this is an ATX case. I know we're using a micro ATX motherboard, but you'll see how thick the cooler is now that we've done that mod. You're going to need an ATX case to fit this in. Um, so yes, I wanted to try it out. I got one white, I got one black. It comes with an RGB fan in the back. It's got this little RGB strip on the front. Um, so it'd be interesting to try it out. I always like trying new cases. For the power supply, um, we have some Corsair CX550 RGB. So these are actually pretty nice units um, and really good price. I think I got these for around £30 um, on some kind of special crazy deal. Um, and that's brand new as well. So that's also really, really good. Um, in terms of fans, obviously, like I said, there's one built into the case and we're also gonna be adding three just plain black fans from my stock that I have at the back there. You can see I've got loads of them. So we'll be adding all that together, hopefully putting together something really, really good and very, very good value. So without further ado, let's build it up. Let's build it up, Turbo. Bam, bam.
there we are. And what a beauty she is. No, not really. I mean, it's not the most beautiful gaming PC we've put together, but nor was I expecting it to be. Um, I was expecting this just to be something that's really excellent value, and I think that is what we've pulled off today. Now, one thing I didn't mention in this video, nor in the last one, is that um, with this Fury X card, I didn't actually realise this until I built it, you have to do um, a BIOS flash on the graphics card itself in order to get it to work on a UEFI motherboard. So, you know, there's UEFI, UEFI and then CSM, which is the old style. Um, and obviously, if you want to use Windows 11, you don't want to use CSM, all this kind of stuff, right? So I thought, let's just flash the vBIOS. Oh my gosh, this was really annoying because it doesn't use the standard vBIOS for the Fury X. You have to go to Asus website, extract everything from their, their file and everything. It was a whole mess, but I did eventually manage to do it using the, um, I think the Tech Power Up vBIOS flasher. Um, so eventually managed to get that working with UEFI and I was very happy with myself. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's not bad looking PC. It's not ugly by any means. Um, it's not going to blow your socks off, but I think that is to be expected. So let's get into next. What are we thinking about gaming performance wise? And this is where this is a real turn up for the books. And it shows you just how good uh, those i3 CPUs are. So let's start up with a bit of the old Fortnite. We do love a bit of Fortnite. Um, and in this, we're getting anywhere between 200 and 300 frames per second. Now, I don't know, maybe you're a bit of a snob and you want more, but come on, this is pretty nice. And if you've got a high, super high refresh rate monitor, you're going to be having happy days with this. Um, you're going to have a really great gaming um, experience. I think you'd be over the moon with a machine like this if you're mainly playing games like Fortnite. So what about Call of Duty Warzone? So that is um, obviously probably the most popular title at the moment. It's the one that most people are playing that buy gaming PCs from uh, JCPC Custom. So obviously I've got a bit of insider info there. Um, but we're hovering around that sort of 100 to 105 frames per second mark. And I think, again, that is pretty nice. Considering the age of this graphics card, um, yeah, I was pretty happy that we were able to get consistently over 60 frames per second on the competitive settings. And this is going to be more than enough for somebody that's just starting out with PC and does have a limited budget. So, come on, what more can we want than, than, than what we've got here, really, with the with the budget that we were going for? Um, we're also going to put some temperature results up on the screen here as well. Um, not the best temperatures, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. We're not anywhere near the thermal throttling places or anything like that, so this is going to be fine. And remember, these temperature tests are in uh, unrealistic circumstances, so this is really a worst-case scenario temperature test. So I'm absolutely chuffed with how these both turned out. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Did you prefer the black version or the white version? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know which one I like. I think they both have their place, really. Um, I think maybe in terms of you know, shrouding it, maybe the black one looks better, maybe in terms of a fresh look, maybe you want the white one. I think it's really going to depend on what the rest of your setup looks like. If you've got quite a white room already, maybe I think the white one's better. Um, but if you want something neutral, the black one. Um, yeah, tell me below in the comments what you thought. Like, subscribe, yeah, YouTube stuff, blah, 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 blah. Hopefully see you in the next video. And I'm going to leave it there. So bye-bye.